There are a few precious humans that I've met over the course of my lifetime that together have contributed those attributes that I think of when I think of the person that I want to be. Jim is one of those people. Always to me, he was kind, he was generous to everyone, really. He was generous. He was soft-spoken. And very importantly, he was genuine. And these characters, together with his unbridled passion for what he loved, for orchids, for plants, for conservation, made him one of the humans I admire the most. I remember a day, um, and it's been nearly two decades ago, when I was the curator of the herbarium at Clemson University. I had just really started there. And this fellow shows up one day, and he says he wants to look at orchid specimens in the herbarium. So I wadeered him for a minute to find out what his interest in these orchids was. And he convinced me very quickly that he was just fascinated with these plants, and he wanted to learn more. So Jim made it into the herbarium, and he made it back time and time again. He would ask me advice. He would ask me where to see this, where to see that. And it wasn't long before I went from giving advice to Jim to seeking advice from Jim. That growth um, was really special to see. Um, and it's part of the reason why I think um, he was always endeared to me. You may not know all that Jim did. Um, so many of us followed him on Flickr, followed his social media, read his blog posts with hundreds of subscribers. Um, we're so lucky to have all of that there, all those blog posts, all those photographs, those books um, that he left behind that are really unparalleled and will never be equaled for things like the orchids of South Carolina, the green swamp. But few of us know of his actions behind the scenes. Um, you may not know about his work with Swamp Pink, for instance, getting special permission from Mary Bunch um, to really be a caretaker for another incredibly beautiful and endangered plant in South Carolina and really worldwide that owes its health and owes its persistence in South Carolina, at least in part, to this amazing man. You may not have been the recipient of one of the, the blessings of going on a trip with Jim. Um, nearly anyone that would contact Jim and would ask about going to see a plant, going on one of his trips, they were eventually invite, invited along. And you were treated not just to seeing beautiful plants and orchids that you may have never found before, but you were treated to that special soft-spoken kindness and encouragement that Jim brought. So many accomplishments, stamps. <laughs> I mean, how many of us can say that we inspired and our photographs ended up on a US postage stamp collection? That's pretty powerful, but it's not the accomplishments. It's the heart of the man that will always stay with me. Jim had a way of, of capturing the love that he shared for the plants and for the people in the images that he took. And I can honestly say, I don't think anyone will ever capture again the image of orchids in the manner that he did. I'll always picture him every time I see an orchid, any orchid. When I see the white calipogon that he so generously gave to me so many years ago that now reside not only at the South Carolina Botanical Garden, but here at Heronswood, so far away on the other coast. And the legacy of Jim lives on. I can honestly say that I can give this man the strongest compliment I can give to anyone. That is that I truly admire him.